Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful fall day. Thank you for gathering with us so that we can praise God together, so that we can honor the saints of our lives on this All Saints Sunday, and we can hear God's promises to us that comfort us in the midst of our grieving. If you are worshiping with us for the first time or the first time in a while, welcome. We're so glad to have you here. We hope that you'll fill out, everyone will fill out one of those welcome cards. Uh, this helps us to know who's present, but also in case we ever need to get in touch with the people who were at this worship service, um, that we would be able to do so. We also uh, invite you uh, to sing all the hymns which is new as of last week, and to speak all the words, but to keep your mask on, except for that time when we partake in Holy Communion. So if you have not received a, a cup and wafer from the back, you'll want to get that so you can partake in Holy Communion. And then once we um, have said the words of institution, and I've said, taste and see that the Lord is good, you can remove your mask We'll all receive the body of Christ together and the blood of Christ together. Don't worry, I'll give instructions as we get closer to that time. As I said, today is All Saints Sunday, and I am so thankful for the many of you who brought pictures of your loved ones who surround ourselves with them and their image as we worship this day. Some of you lined our um, stained glass windows on either side. Some of you put things up here. If you have something you'd like to put up here, you're welcome to do that during the prelude or the opening hymn. I also invite you, if you would like, to remember someone who's in the columbarium. There are candles there, and you're welcome to, or anyone, uh, uh, you can go out and light a candle there in memory of a loved one. Also in the back as you came in, if you would like to put a leaf on our tree of life for uh, someone who has passed away, um, you're welcome to do so. There are little squares of green fabric out there, and there are little pieces of paper. What you'll do is write the name of the person on that paper and then stick it to uh, the fabric uh, with the pins that are present. And then there's a basket right there for you to leave those in. And then they will become part of this great tapestry of uh, all the people who we love who are now alive with Christ. Today is the first Sunday of the month. Tim, I didn't give you forewarning, but uh, that means that we honor all who are born or who have an anniversary in the month of November. So if that is you, please stand so that we may sing happy birthday and happy anniversary to you. so glad you were born or found love in this month. And Diane, I'm just going to say that today is Diane Quast's birthday, and she'll let you know what a wonderful birthday it is, what a wonderful number. So welcome. Um, give her a good greeting today, uh, especially. <laughs> and with those announcements, we'll prepare our hearts for worship with this beautiful prelude. I want 
to cross over into campground. Oh, when I get to heaven, I'll take my seat and cast my crown at Jesus' feet. to cross over into campground. Please stand for the Thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be God, the Father of all, Jesus, the source of all mercy and consolation, and the Holy Spirit, who invites us into holy community. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of God, we too might be united with him in a resurrection like his. We give thanks for those saints baptized this year, Marissa D'Ambrosia and Samuel Webb. Gather around this font of living water. We remember that the Holy Spirit invites us to holy community with you, O oh God, reminding us that your church is a communion of saints stretching beyond time and place, united in you. May your light shine in and through us. And may we always remember those who have gone before us into eternity those who shared your love, shone with your light, and helped sow your seeds of communion. We remember especially the saints who have died this past year. Rich Adam, Yvonne Ambler, Betty Andrup, Albert Betts, Doris Bradley, Lois Brothers, Fred Delisle, Charlotte Elder, Aaron Elliott, Joyce Fedor, Harold Lostad Jr., Leo Flores, Anna May Fresh, Lars Gosell, Jeff Horn, Reverend Carrie G. Mack, Robert Madlin, Eunice Melsby, Julie Moldenhauer, Harriet Naden. Alvian Roberts, Karen Saracen, Ron Sealing, Galen South, DeRay Teepe, Don Tremper, Kathy Tonkovic, William Yates, Ronald Zemer. Eternal God, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. 
Jesus Christ, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. Holy Spirit and comforter of all who sorrow, our source of communion, we worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, O holy community, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion. In the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So you may remember here, over the last couple of weeks, we've been um, asking that question of what's in your pocket? What do you carry with you for those times when it may be difficult, when you may need a little something extra? Uh, when you might find yourself in a bind. And today, we have so many practices, right? So many things happening. It might be a picture you carry in your pocket. It might be uh, a match or a lighter to, to uh, light a candle. It might be somebody's name you carry in your pocket. Uh, but the ones we have um, provided that we're going to focus on today are the, are the little pocket crosses. Right? And you may have also noticed there's some little vials of oil. Right? And these help us remember a cross that we carry with us, whether it be the one you hold in your hand or um, the one that's on your heart. Um, but they're the reminder um, that in our baptisms, right, a cross was marked on us uh, in water, one in oil, and we carry them with us all through our lives. And these crosses are special. Um, because uh, of, the, of the connection that they um, forge, if you will, uh, between us and Jesus. Right? You heard pastors say, we were baptized into the death of Jesus, and we were baptized into the life, and we were baptized into everything else in between, the boring days, the fun days, the excitement, everything. And that connection is there. And so you may carry these as a reminder of that, of Jesus' constant presence. Um, it may be of good times. It may be of bad times. It, it, it may also remind you of a loved one. It may also 
remind you um, of, of joy yet to come. Uh, but these are some things you can carry in your pocket and hold while it is you pray or think about God or think about those good things. All right? And so that's our practice today among many other practices. So I hope this service is a rich one for you as we're surrounded by the saints. We're going to hear some stories now from the first reading and from the gospel. I hope they're rich for you, friends. The first reading is from Revelation chapter 21. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you have sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. It has been a hard year. Truthfully, I'm not sure that really covers it. It's been a really hard year. For this congregation. As I was preparing for this sermon today, I read the story of a colleague who years ago was serving a parish in rural Wisconsin. And the parish she had served had mourned for many of their beloved older members. 
And then right before All Saints Sunday, two other members passed away, each a beloved pillar of the community. A mother of young children in her 40s died after battling breast cancer for years. A mother in her 50s was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and died within a matter of weeks. And my colleague shared this, and I quote, When it came time to preach, I read the gospel lesson and then looked out over the congregation and began by stating the obvious. It has been a really hard year for this congregation. And the gathered assembly let out an audible sigh and heads nodded in agreement. It was as if that acknowledgement from the pulpit gave them permission also to acknowledge the burden of collective grief and thereby lay it down for a moment. It had indeed been a hard year. As I read my colleague's story, I longed for that same moment for us. And as I read those names in our thanksgiving for baptism and remembered those saints that we dearly loved, I felt the need for it even more. That audible sigh, that agreement and acknowledgement that it has been a very hard year for this congregation. We carry a great burden of collective grief. And this moment, this day of all saints is an opportunity to lay that grief down for a moment. It's been a hard year for this congregation. It's been a hard year for the world, really. Since the last time we gathered on the All Saints Sunday last year, 19 people of this congregation have passed away. Perhaps you all remember that season in November, December of last year, where it felt like every time you opened up your email, you had that special message from St. Mark and learned of another passing of a beloved saint of this community. Add to that the people in your own individual lives whom you've lost, the people that have gone into the glory of God, and pile on top of that the deaths from COVID that we've all been vigilant of watching. Almost 750,000 people in the United States and 5.1 million people worldwide. Some of our very own dearly beloved friends and family. It has been a really hard year. And one of the gifts of All Saints Sunday is that it gives us a place to communally grieve, to mourn together, to acknowledge our grief. It gives us a place where we don't have to pretend anymore. We don't have to pretend that we aren't grieving. We don't have to pretend that everything is just fine. We don't have to hide our tears or our sorrow. We don't have to bear the burden of our sorrow quietly on our own. Today, in this place, we name those we love and miss and wish were still with us, even as we know that they're in eternal life with God and how good that must be for them. Today, we rest. We rest in our grief, and we rest from carrying the burden of that grief on our own. We rest from pretending our sorrow doesn't exist. We rest from pretending that death doesn't exist. A couple of months ago, I was looking at all of the Sundays that we've had in these past months and the months to come. And I assigned to each one of them one of the practices of the way of love. Turn, learn, pray, rest, bless, worship, go. And I chose rest for this day. Rest. 
And as I approached this day, I wondered if that was the right practice for what we have before us. Would worship work better? Or would bless work? But as we gather this day, I think that rest is the right practice. The Way of Love resources say this of the practice of rest. From the beginning of creation, God has established the sacred pattern of going and returning, labor and rest. God invites us to de dedicate time for restoration and wholeness within our bodies, minds, and souls, and within our communities and institutions. By resting, we place our trust in God, the primary actor who brings all things to their fullness. Today, we honor that sacred pattern of going and returning. We said the names of the newly baptized, those who have come to be with us in this world, and we've named those and will continue to name those who have gone on, that going and coming, but it really is in that last line that really makes rest the best word for this day. By resting, we place our trust in God, the primary actor who brings all things to their fullness. Today, we lay our burden of sorrow before God. We rest in our grief before God. And by doing so, we place our trust exactly where it should be, in God. We trust God to handle our sorrow. We trust God to bring all things to their fullness. We trust God to do God's work with death, to bring the lives of these saints and our own lives to fullness in Christ. This day, in our What's in Your Pocket adventure, we're given the opportunity to pick up one of these pocket crosses and to hold it in our hands. And when we do so, I think we hold in our hands the very reason we can so fully trust God to be God. That we can so fully trust God with our sorrow and our pain and our grief. Because on the cross, Jesus, the Son of God, faced the very thing that brings us to the moments of grief in our life. On that cross, Jesus willingly faced death directly, resolutely, completely. Jesus breathed his last on the cross. He died and was buried. And the creed reminds us that he descended to the dead, to hell, where God faced the deepest death and darkness and defeated it all, once and for all. And then on the third day, Jesus rose from the dead and brought resurrection life. God is not, has not, will not be afraid to take death on. God is not afraid to face the tomb, the tomb of Lazarus, the tombs of our loved ones, the tombs we have in our own hearts and in our own lives and call out life from those very tombs. Christ meets us in our despair through the cross. Christ cries with us in our despair, just like he cried at the death of Lazarus, just like he cried out on the cross. Jesus meets us, cries with us, and then gets to the business of defeating death. God unbinds our lives from the grips of death. God wipes the tears from our eyes, and then God points us forward to look with hope to that time when God will make all things new, when God's home will be with us, as we hear in our beautiful text from Revelation, when death 
and crying and mourning and pain will be no more. Today, we rest from the burden of carrying our griefs as we lay them at the feet of Jesus. And we take up the cross and hold on to the promise within it, the promise that strengthens us to continue in this journey of life, the promise that the one who is the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega is with us, loves us, died for us, triumphed over death for us and for all the saints. Friends, that's something to hold on to, something to help us through this hard year and whatever is to come. Today, we mourn together. Today, we recognized what a hard year it has been. And today, we lay the burden of our sorrow at the feet of Jesus and hold fast to the cross to the good news of the resurrection. Today, we rest and trust in God. Thanks be to God. Amen. seems bleak on God's good promise they rely so while they live and when they die a force fully they speak the strong who once were weak give thanks for those whose hope is clear beyond me mortal sight who seek the city God has planned the true eternal promised land and steer on toward that light a beacon ever bright give thanks for those whose love is pure a sparkling precious stone they show by what they say and do an inward beauty warm and true for god's concerns they own god's love through them is shown United into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray with all God's saints for healing, wholeness, and peace in all the earth. God of glory, we ask your blessing for chaplains, deacons, and pastors as they embody your grace in, forgotten, in the forgotten places of this world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We seek healing for all who struggle and suffer. Refresh those who suffer with the water of life and fill them with your abundant love. Lord, in your mercy. And we give you thanks for all the saints. May their love and light always be near to us through you. Today, we remember especially Rich Adam. Jean Blazik. Yvonne Ambler. Ron Blazik. Betty Andrup. Carol Bloomquist. Carol Anderson. Esther Bloomquist. Homer Ashton. George Bloomquist. Larry Ball. Ingvi Bloomquist. Christy Babcock. Norman Bosek. Len Bazan. 
Adeline and Raymond Bradley. Robert Bergman. Don Bradley. Albert Betts. Doris Bradley. Edgar Bingham. Lois Brothers. Lydia Bingham. Fred and Lily Buck. Herb Blazik. Jack and Inez Buss. Charles and Marge Clouser. Harriet Naden. Fred Delisle. Fred Natchke. Charlotte Elder. Elma Nystrom. Aaron Elliott. Lester Nystrom. Ray Ennis. William Nystrom. Joyce Fedor. Walter and Jeanette Olson. Alice Fell. John and Joyce Post. John Fell. Emma Quast. Harold Floystad Jr. Alvian Roberts. Leo Flores. Bill Roberts. Lillian Flores. Violet Rotkowski. Anna May Fretch. Karen Saracen. Lars Gosell. Richard and Gladys Schultz. Beverly Gron. Marjorie and Philip Schweitzer. Edward Gron. Ron Sealing. Paul A. Gustafson. Robert and Florence Smith. Tim Hasse. Galen South. Jeff Horn. Ken Swedberg. Ralph Hauslein. Robert Swedberg. Lois Cowell. Dere Teepee. Donna Lang. Don Tremper. Kevin Lang. Kathy Tonkovic. The Reverend Carrie G. Mack. Cindy Verma. Robert Madlin. Wally Wenzel. Betty and Frank McDade. William Yates. Eunice Melsby. Ronald Zemer. Julie Moldenauer. And all those we name aloud are in the silence of our hearts. Wipe away our tears of sorrow and mourning and draw us into holy communion. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your care, Alpha and Omega, we entrust all for whom we pray. Be with us now and always. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. We share a sign of that peace with those around you. Congregation, you may be seated. We'll hear a beautiful song by our choir, and the offering will be collected from the back toward the front. Thank you.
We give thanks for the many gifts and resources that you give to this ministry of St. Mark, this ministry that has been tended by the saints of our past and the saints of our future and you, the saints of now. Let us bless those gifts with this prayer. Holy God, the earth is yours and everything in it, yet you have chosen to dwell among your creatures. Come among us now in these gifts of bread and wine and strengthen us to be your body for the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're gathering around this table for Jesus' holy and sustaining meal. You want to take out your juice or wine and your wafer just so you have it with you. What will happen is we'll say the words of institution and the Lord's Prayer. And then after the Lord's Prayer, I'll say, taste and see that the Lord is good. We'll all open up our wafer and partake in the body of Christ together. And then we'll say the blood of Christ is shed for you and you'll open up your wine and we'll all partake in the blood of Christ together. Please stand for this holy meal. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the witness of your saints, you show us the hope of your calling and strengthen us to run the race set before us, that we may delight in your mercy and rejoice with them in glory. And so with Rich, Betty, Albert, Charlotte, Joyce, Leo, Anna Mae, Lars, Robert, Eunice, Julia, Julie, Harriet, Alvian, Karen, Ron, Galen, Duray, Don, William, and all the saints. With the choirs of angels and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for remembrance of me. Gathered into one, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom come, thy will will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All who hunger and thirst come. The table is ready. Taste and see that the Lord is good. the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you.
Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, at this table you have been for us both host and meal. Now send us forth to extend our tables and to share your gifts until that day when all feast together at your heavenly banquet. Amen. God, the beginning and the end, who has written your name in the book of life, bless and keep you in grace and peace from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Amen. the saints before us. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.